Allah tests you according to your level. In one narration, the hadith says, Allah tests you according to how much He loves you. He loves you more, He tests you more. That's a hadith. In real life, they are depressed. Uh, mental health. But I feel like the way that I have money kind of took away a lot of my happiness. Do you know what I'm saying? Why you not go to a therapist? Oh, I'm always depressed, all the time. Assalamu alaikum. After going through hours of Muftima expression about pursuing happiness and removing the sadness from our heart or the disease from our heart, that's what he likes to call it. I compiled 10 minutes of the words that really got me thinking again. I believe this video will make a difference to your Iman and change your thinking forever. When Allah wants you to get something, to achieve something or to give you something, nobody can stop it. Even if the whole world is trying to block you from achieving something, they won't be able to do it. If the whole nation gets together to benefit you, they won't be able to benefit you except with that which Allah has written for you. And the opposite also is in the same hadith. The Prophet Muhammad is telling us that if the entire ummah, the whole nation gets together to harm you, they will never be able to inflict any harm upon you unless Allah has written it against you. If Allah has written it against you, you need to know nothing is going to stop it. My brothers and sisters, we are human beings. It is only natural and normal that sometimes we feel very happy and sometimes we feel sad. So when we are happy, we need to ask ourselves, what is it that has made us happy? If it is the relationship you have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is something everlasting. If it is something material connected to this world, remember it is temporary and the day will come when Allah will test you by reversing it. It has to be. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said clearly that if you are given and bestowed something, it is not a guarantee that that item will remain with you. In a verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah explains, we will definitely test every single one of you with some of fear, with some of hunger, and with several different types of loss. It's a long verse, but what I want to look at today is when we are sad, what exactly do we need to do? Firstly, ask yourself, is my relationship with the maker, the owner of happiness, good? Is it intact? Is it proper? For example, if I am a person who has no link with Salah, no link with the Quran, no link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how do I expect to combat the sadness that I am feeling? I will continue feeling more sad because I have lost focus. Lost focus from what? from the reality, the destination, from exactly where I am. This is known as the world. In Arabic, we call it the dunya, this life. The life on earth is absolutely temporary. It is not going to last long. We, in actual fact, are here to be tested. It is a testing ground. Evidence regarding the fact that this is a testing ground is that none of us has what we want in this world. Rather, we only get what Allah has chosen for us. So he tests us with health matters, financial matters, family matters, so many other different issues, different types of loss. Things do not happen according to what or according to how we want them to happen. Because Allah is telling you, hang on, this is just a test. We want to see how you react. Will this bring you closer to us? Will it make you realize that it is temporary? Absolutely temporary. People we found are very sad today and some news comes to them within a split second. They can become the happiest people on earth and vice versa. We've seen it happening. So this is Allah. He is the one who gives you glad tidings. You become so excited after you were so sad and you can become so sad after you believed you had everything on earth. This is Allah's plan. Do not lose focus. It is Allah. However, like I said, when you are sad, the first question you have to ask yourself, how is my relationship with Allah? That relationship is connected to your salah, primarily your five daily prayers. Do you read them with enthusiasm? We are not even talking about regularity because that is supposed to be the case anyway. 
but we're talking about enthusiasm. Do you look forward to the prayer? Do you realize what you are doing when you are reading or fulfilling the five daily prayers? Sit for a moment and think it will snatch your sadness. It will withdraw. It will combat the sadness you are feeling just by thinking for a moment. What am I doing? Who am I putting my head on the ground for here? Who is it? The one who made me, the one who owns my happiness, the one who's in control and ultimately the one I'm going to go back to when my eyes close like everybody eyes else's eyes have already closed and are closing and will close. I'm going to go back to the supreme deity whom I've just put my head on the ground for Allahu Akbar. It is powerful. If you sit and ponder over it, that alone will help you to remove the sadness in your life. Because even if everything is going against your liking, you are assured that it is going according to the plan of Allah. Nothing goes according to someone else's plan. It is Allah's plan. So it makes you happy to say, Oh Allah, if this is your plan for me, then Ya Allah, just make it easy for me to go through. I'm not going to compete with you. We can never compete with Allah. But we call out to him. He gives us the energy. He gives us various means to try and help ourselves. And he expects us to use what he has given us to help ourselves. And on top of that, we would be asking Allah to remove the sadness. Even the Prophet ﷺ was told not to be sad. You need to turn back. It's never too late. My brothers and sisters, we turn to Allah. We turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not too late. We're breathing. Take a look at the world. Learn by looking at the globe. Watch the people. See the most content people are not those who run behind materialistic items. Remember that. Wallahi, I promise you. Yes, you might look at glamour, you might look at popularity, you might look at someone who the world looks at as, wow, a superhero, someone who's a movie star in real life. They're depressed. I don't have a mom I can call. I don't have a father I can call. I don't have my, you know what I'm saying? Like my, like my aunt, who was the last thing that I had, is gone. Do you know what I'm saying? Why you not go to a therapist? Oh, I'm always depressed, all the time. Um, I have to constantly bring myself out of it. Like I wake up depressed, but like I'm like, okay, now I know my steps because like you learn from the real. Like now I have to go outside and be in the sun for a little bit. I was completely suicidal, didn't want to live anymore. I thought that I was completely alone. I was alone and I was alone in my hotel. And I remember there was like a window right there. And I like, God, I remember crying because I was thinking about how the way that I was going to die was I was going to do it. I got more depressed. Experienced great loneliness at times. I have literally been at the lowest point that a human being could be. Mental health, uh, especially. But I feel like the way that I have money kind of took away a lot of my happiness. They are struggling. They have addiction sometimes to various things, even drugs. They suffer with problems. They are bipolar. Look at so many of these pop stars popping one after the other. Pop, 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 pop. Have you seen that? That's why they're called pop stars. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. My brothers and sisters, we need to serve the ummah. We need to have a concern for the next generations. We need to serve Allah so that at least in our progeny, when they watch us, do you know the most powerful way of relaying the message is for them to follow by example. When you are fulfilling salah, when you dress in a specific way, your child who cannot yet speak in your language, who cannot yet communicate properly in your own system, will fight to dress the way you dress just because that is the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you fulfill your salah constantly, your child will be found in sujood before they can even walk. Do you know that? Why? Did you talk to them? No, it was Allah's way of telling you, look, if you are good, inshallah, by the will of Allah, they will have a good upbringing. What they do beyond a certain age becomes between them and Allah. Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the rotation of the night and the day are signs for those with intellect. Remember this. There are signs. These signs, yes, they show you the oneness of Allah, the closeness of, that you have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the greatness of Allah, but they also alleviate your suffering. 
There are many signs. This is why when a person is stressed, sometimes those counselors will tell you, go and take a look at the greenery, sit and watch. You see the water, you see the horses, you see a beautiful scene. What does it do to you? It de-stresses you. For a disbeliever, it's just the scenery. It's a creator, creation of Allah. For us, it is the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be sad. Really, these days are not permanent. They are temporary. The only time you should be sad is when you have drifted away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is something that saddens a lot of people. People become depressed. They become sad because your life is full of partying, full of gambling, full of adultery, full of drinking. How do you not expect sadness when you are far away from Allah? You want to combat the sadness. Come back to Allah. Come. Allah is waiting for you. Allah becomes so happy when you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if Allah is happy, he will definitely make you happy. My brothers and sisters, remember, sadness is something that you can do much about. And the evidence of it, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, do not be sad at this and do not be sad at that. You know when Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu was with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the cave. So he was with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he was saddened slightly. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam read verses that were revealed to him. A portion of it, don't be sad, Allah is with us. Do you know what this means for me and you? How can you be sad when you know Allah is with you? How can you be sad when you know Allah is with you? No matter what they're going to try, it's only by the permission of Allah that they will be able to achieve if Allah wants them to.